Well, hello everybody, and uh, thank you so much for tuning in to this video. Um, I hope everybody is uh, doing well out there during all of this uh, COVID craziness. I know a lot of states are deciding to uh, reopen, and I hope anybody watching these in those states, and especially in uh, New York State, my home state, we all decide to be very safe and very conscious of what is going on, um, and we stay safe and we do our best to get through all of this together. Um, I would like to officially welcome you into the first full video of uh, my second project, uh, which I'm very excited to get working on uh, with my uh, new director. Of course, my new director is uh, Mr. Weston Young. Uh, him and I went to Fredonia together again. Uh, we are uh, close friends and we are both very excited to be working on this project. Um, this <clears throat> is most likely going to be uh, not most likely, this is going to be my last um, design project like this. Um, I have started a temporary position back at uh, the casino where I work, so things are getting a little uh, crazy. I, am, uh, I went from working on call, getting mid, uh, not a few hours, not many hours, but sometimes I would get a lot at a time to getting no hours over the period of about three or four months during the quarantine shutdown. And now I am full time in this uh, temporary position until things go back to normal. So um, I figured, you know, this would be a, a good time to try and slow things down, get back into my work schedule, get ready for. Um, everything coming up, hopefully getting back to uh, production work and theater work. Um, I am looking to keep some uh, visualization, visualizer videos going uh, with my Grand May program and even with my ETC programs. Um, so hopefully those will be coming out later, but um, this is going to be the last design project I do most likely unless I decide to pick it up. Uh, a little bit later, which, who knows, I might get the itch to do a little design from homework again. Um, so, that's uh, that update. Um, you know, I also wanted to mention that these videos, uh, the second uh, set of uh, design from home project videos, are going to be a little bit different than the first. Um, in the first set of uh, videos, the first project, I really went in depth um, with how I did things. Um, you know, what my process was. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be going in as in-depth in these uh, in this set of videos. Um, we'll see if, uh, you know, I want to go as in-depth. Um, you know, I think it's going to be, uh, I don't think there's going to be as much information packed into these videos as there once was. Um, but we'll see how we feel with each video. Um, that might change. My feelings might change in how I want to do it. So we will definitely see. Um, so today I wanted to talk a little bit about um, the play itself and what our concept is. Um, and then in the next video I am going to go on uh, uh, talk about research. Um, somewhat similar to what I did before, um, but again I don't know how much, um, how packed these videos are going to be with information. Um, also, another thing worth mentioning, those of you who are uh, tuning into these videos as they premiere, uh, I am switching over to um, uh, posting these videos every other week, um, again, just because things are getting um, more interesting, uh, shall we say, with uh, going into a uh, full-time position, a temporary full-time position until things get back to normal, or a new sense of normal, as I'm sure it's going to be. Um, so, uh, the play again is called, uh, Stupid Fucking Bird. Um, from here on out, hopefully, uh, I'm going to be referring to it as SFB, um, just because, um, you know, the play itself does have, uh, an expletive in it, some obscenity, um, so I don't want to be mentioning that throughout the whole video, just in case there are any younger students or younger children watching. Um, so SFB is a uh, play by Aaron Posner. It is a meta-theater adaptation of Anton Chekhov's The Seagull. Um, and I think this is very fitting. Um, even before I uh, picked out these two plays to run with and, and do as my uh, 
projects here. Um, you know, they were given to me by my two friends, of course, and it was uh, there was no correlation between the two. Um, but I think it's fitting that both of these plays uh, have something to do with the seagull. I think it's very fitting. I think it's very funny. Um, so it is a uh, meta theater adaptation of uh, Chekhov's *The Seagull*. Um, and for those of you that don't know, uh, meta theater um, is a style of theater where uh, characters are often self-aware. Uh, they are aware that they are in a play, um, and they are um, aware of the day-to-day, -day, um, but they know they are characters in this play being played uh, for an audience, um, which is something this play deals with, and it's a main theme in this show. Um, so the play itself uh, centers around a young playwright who is struggling with his art and what he uh, does with the said art. Um, he has uh, he has come to realization that his art doesn't really make enough of a difference in the world. He wants to do more of his art. He wants his art to make more of a difference and more of an impact. Um, and throughout the, the play itself, he starts spiraling out of control uh, where he even tries to kill himself um, and harm others in the play. Um, him and the other characters in the show are constantly tortured by the idea of just wanting to be loved and cared for but never can get themselves into a healthy relationship, be with family or with their friends. Um, there's a lot of uh, toxic relationships in this show, um, and this is a, that's another main theme in this show. Um, you know, it's, it's all about art and the impact it has, and it's also about these uh, relationships that go on in the show. Um, like I mentioned, the play itself is very meta-theater in nature. The characters are very self-aware that they're in the show and that it's being performed for this audience. Um, at several points throughout the show, um, they talk directly to the audience about what is going on in the show and in their day-to-day -day lives for this show. Um, you know, they even talk about, at points, what is happening in the world. Um, and them talking about what's going on in the play, in their day-to-day -day lives, in this world, is only fueling, um, you know, it's especially fueling for the existential crisis that the main character, Con, Conrad, uh, is going through at the time uh, and throughout the whole play. Um, so the uh, main concept that we came up for this show uh, is that the play itself is taking place in an older abandoned theater. Um, the actors that are putting on this show are struggling to be able to put on this show, to be able to afford scenery for this, props for this. Um, you know, they're, the, the drapes they're using are going to be a little bit older, they're going to be a little bit tattered, a little bit more worn. Um, the walls of the theater themselves are going to be old, they're going to be rusty, uh, they're going to be a little bit dirty, um, and we're going to be, we're going to uh, see all the walls in the theater, we're going to very much know we're in a theater. Um, the, uh, some of the lighting fixtures will be able to be seen, but they're not going to be right out in the open. Um, throughout the play itself, there's going to be, um, some UV lit graffiti that's going to be, um, revealed throughout the show. Uh, little by little, at the end of each act, uh, throughout the show, it's going to be revealed. Um, and this centers around, uh, another one of the main, the, uh, other main theme in the show, of characters just wanting to be able to be loved, to finding a healthy relationship, finding love finally, um, just being in that um, healthy relationship they can't, that they just can't seem to find. Um, as I was reading the show, um, you know, I uh, came up with the concept uh, of uh, for lighting, where what if uh, the world itself that we're set in. Uh, this uh, world of meta theater, Conrad's world that he's living in, is in its own reality. Um, you know, the world of the seagull, uh, the world of stupid fucking bird, as it were, is set in its own reality, where this reality is going to be in a world of half light, if you will. Um, the idea here being that uh, the uh, world is always going to be set at like sunset or dusk um, and there will uh, be uh, nighttime and there will be a sunset time but uh, the way I put it as I've been saying it to Weston uh, is that uh, the sun will never rise on Conrad's perfect world 
um, because his main goal in this uh, show is to be able to find love, find a healthy relationship. He wants to make a difference in the world. He wants to put on his plays and make a real difference in the world. He wants to finally find that. But everything he's going through, everything um, with his relationships with his mother, everything going on with the audience being there at all times, it's not helping his uh, world. It's not helping what he's going through. Um, and as I've mentioned, uh, you know, the sun will never rise. You know, it's never going to be his perfect world. He's never going to see the light of day, as it were. Um, and because of this uh, reality we're setting up from the very beginning, you know, lighting is going to be very uh, presentational, as it were. It's going to help set the scenes. Um, you know, because it's going to be very presentational, very meta theater, um, we're going to be able to play around with this reality quite a bit. Um, and the one uh, moment that stands out in my mind, which is a great example for uh, you, uh, for my viewing audience, um, is that um, at one point Conrad goes on a tear about what uh, has been going wrong in his relationship with, I want to say it's Nina, or no, Emma, uh, to one of the characters. Um, and forgive me if I've gotten that wrong, I'm sure I did, but uh, it's his love interest. Um, he's going off on this tangent about what did I do wrong, what happened here, what's, what's going on, why don't you love me, this, that, and the other. And it's this whole page and a half monologue about everything that's going wrong in his life, what did he do wrong, what's happened, what's going on in my life. And as that's going on, the lights around him are somewhat going to shift. As we, uh, as we have these moments where we break the reality, um, you know, to really help set the mood with what's going on as things are getting more intense, we're going to play around with the lighting with different colors and different different angles and different um, uh, different lighting ideas. Um, when the uh, actors uh, speak directly to the audience, they break that reality and we go into a sort of soliloquy world um, where it's going to be a very white light, where it's just going to be them in that white light talking to the audience. Um, in the uh, nighttime looks, because again, we have uh, very sunset themed looks and we have nighttime looks. The nighttime looks are going to be uh, a very rich blue uh, coming in um, on one side of the face and on the other side of the face coming in from sort of a side light uh, area. We're going to have a nice rich orange or amber uh, that is going to be reminiscent of uh, tiki torches. Um, because our idea here is that uh, everything is set outside and this is more of a um, posh environment, if you will. The characters in this play are a little more well-to-do. Um, so we want a, uh, you know, a well-lit environment and uh, when they go outside at night they're going to have some torches that are going to be lighting their faces. Um, you know, it's one of my favorite looks to recreate on stage. It's just a, a wonderful look itself. I will, uh, I'm sure I'll have, uh, you know, a few research images uh, of that when we go into that research video. Um, so I hope, uh, you know, you have a good grasp of the concept for this show. I'm very excited to be working on it more and more, especially with Weston. Um, it should be a lot of fun for both of us, and um, I do hope you enjoyed this video. Um, it is a little bit shorter, and it's a little bit less content, but again, these the second set of videos is going to be a little bit different from my first set. Um, again, just because I went so in-depth in that first set of videos, and I'm really trying to adjust to this full-time work schedule and everything going on um, in this new normal that we are now experiencing. Um, so I do hope everybody out there is staying safe. Uh, I do hope you have a great uh, rest of your day or a great night or a great evening, whatever it might be when you're watching this. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.